40 students from rural area are able to transform from shy, negative individuals into confident, young, passionate, solution-driven individuals over six months. Ladies and gentlemen, I work with students, about 120 students every year in a rural school in Kedah. Over six months of training, these students are able to transform into passionate storytellers, script writers. And for me today, I want to share with you how and why do I see a need in transforming arts education? One that is based on advocacy for creativity, leadership, and values. How do I do that? Well, it has to start from 10 years ago. I was on a flight to go to Australia to study. In the statistic, one in about 26,000 students are studying overseas every single year, including Australia, and I was one of them 10 years ago. So a lot of those say, look towards the east, sorry, look towards the west. The west always has the better solutions. The grass is always greener on the other side, yeah? Always look beyond, you know, the grass on the other island, it's always nicer. But when do we ever look back at the problem that exists in our own country? We don't even take care of the problems that exist in our own backyard, and there we are trying to, you know, make things better. No, our own country is not going to be better unless we ourselves, every one of us here, promise to be the change ourselves. Well, when I was studying in Australia, I see a lot of art museums, galleries, they have post-show talks with artists, and it really teach me about valuing diversity, valuing differences, and to talk about empathy a lot more in the society. And in Australia, they, have, they are offering speech and drama in almost all the schools, including offering speech and drama in tertiary education levels. But in Malaysia, unfortunately, it's only being offered in Sekolah Seni. Well, for me, I was very driven to come back to Malaysia to make Malaysia a better place by joining Teach for Malaysia. For those who do not know, Teach for Malaysia is a non-profit organization which recruits graduates and professionals across different fields to work, to work in education for about two years. And after these two years, you can continue to work in education or continue um, in different field, but yet continue to contribute because we know how serious is the education inequity in our own system. Well, I was so passionate. And as an organization, we believe no matter where our students come from, be it from rural schools or be it from city areas, we shouldn't limit their success based on where they come from. So I was so, so, so driven. I was so active. I come back, I say, I want to be the Minister of Arts Education in Malaysia. Well, and face a lot of dinosaurs, and me too, day in and day out. For me, in rebuilding this performing arts education, I see three values in it. Number one is to train confident speakers. Our students go through 18 years of schooling and unable to get a job. Why? Because their inability to communicate well in English. Well, I see performing arts education as a way to build confident storytellers. And public speaking is no longer considered as a soft skill. It is actually a skill that you need to be able to succeed in any field. Number two, it creates students to think from other characters, to think from other people's shoes. It creates empathy. And for me, that is needed than anything else in our current society where there's so much hatred, there's so much racism, there's so much injustice. Number three, I see the opportunity of using performing arts education to change my students into solution-driven individuals. How do I do that? I work with a lot of students. And I want to introduce you to some of my students. Meet Siti and Lokman. Siti was 13 years old when I met her. She doesn't know who is 
her father. She only know her father is from another country. And mother was in jail as long as she could remember. She's very close with her grandparents. She has six other siblings. And she lives in a, in a culture that is constantly gossiping. Well, this is a norm, not just for city, but for many, many cities out there. She is extremely bright. So bright, so smart, that no one has ever told her that. And Lukman. I want to tell you this kid about Lukman. I was in a rehearsal session, session with these students, Lukman, and we were addressing something about bullying. And there they are, broke into a fight. They were fighting and fighting and went up and said, Stop! Can teachers soon help you? Please, why are you fighting with another student? I want to help you. He was like, Mom pui pikaha. My mom don't even care about me. Who do you think you are? I was disappointed. I was angry. I was furious. A teacher that worked so hard for you, the teachers weren't. They were just staying in the staff room, and there you are, talking bad, talking at this level to your teacher. And I was reflecting. Not only that, we still have so much racism that is happening. I'm a Thai Chinese Indian teaching in a highly Muslim school. I work with students almost every single day until six o'clock in the evening. And they were accusing me of trying to Christianize the students. I'm like, what? How is that even possible? I'm a Buddhist myself. And I, I believe it stems from a culture of lack of understanding. The work that we are trying to do is push for innovative solutions. I'm not saying following the book is wrong, but sometimes following the book is not the only way in order to achieve success, in order to defy that thing that people think it's impossible. These students that I deal with face all these issues every single day. Their lack of love, lack of attention. They have different learning styles. They love people differently. Of course, they would say things like that to me. They face that every single day. And there I was to say, I want to change your life over two years. That's impossible. For me, what is very, very valuable from this learning experience is they taught me a very important lesson. These students who are hardest to love need the love the most. They need someone who is willing to fight for them, not because of race, not because of political stance, not because of what you believe in, but simply because in, in the hope that you have for them to succeed. So, I work with a group of seven other teachers to set up this learning institution called Lead Spire Academy. Together, we make learning fun, exciting, engaging, and we want students to learn through mastery-based learning. How do we do that? We do this through four different things. Performing arts, leadership training, communication skills training, and online language-based learning. Well, some of the very interesting thing that we have made, we discovered, um, work together to really talk about what is the science of teaching and what is the art of learning. We work on these four, four different very important things that we work on. Storytelling and script writing. Students are able to go deep into their personal narrative to write stories that affect them, like bullying, like gender inequality like climate change, and work together to create a script and put on the performance. Number two, in every single rehearsal session, we would sit down in a circle, sharing circle, where every single one's opinion is valued. And we want to prove that this value-based learning is working. How? We see each other as equals. There is no teacher, there's no student. We are all learning in this sharing circle. Number three, we do performance training. Do you know how difficult it is to stand up here to perform for every single one? It's very hard. It's not easy. But in order to do that, we need to train the student not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, 
and intellectually. And that level of preparation is not easy work. Number four, we do a lot of project-based learning. We encourage students to focus on social issues, issues that affect us every single day and looking at the case studies and looking at stories and looking at poems that affect us at a very deeper level. School shouldn't be a place that disconnects our students with the social uh, society that we live in. So, we work on an education model that allows our students to react rather than disconnect it. Number one, we encourage the students to do research and go out and explore an issue that affects them. We work on bullying, for example, which was a fantastic, uh, which was a very successful educational project based on performing arts last year. Next, students have to work together, engage them in a common solution. Of course, you can talk about how about this, how about that, how about this. We can work on so many things. But if the students are committed towards one solution and make it real, then we ask them to do it. It's the number three. They have to create project and realize their vision. Can it be a performance? Can it be a project-based exhibition? In order to make the world a better place. Number four is to tell the story can be via social media, can be through their own networks, can be in their family setting. And in this education model has helped students like Siti and Lokman to, to, become, to perform so well. Remember the student named Siti? Siti and four other students were selected to represent Malaysia at a Design for Change conference in Taiwan. And this year, two of other students were also selected to talk about re-innovating education as a whole in kids education revolution in India. And by the end of this year, City will also go to Italy to present and work with a group of teachers to talk about, you know, design for change. And I want to share with you, the students from rural area are able to do that. What more are we promising if we are able to transform and introduce more performing arts education based on one model on leadership, values, and creativity. Yes, we can complain. There's too much hatred. There's too much racism. There's too much issues. Don't have to work so hard. The country is broken anyway, politically. You know, we can focus on so much issues. And, but you know what? This is not just one country's problem. Learning. We are facing a global learning crisis, but I have a proposition here. I want to reinvent, rebuild, and transform arts education so that we can build better learning system. One that inspire our students, one that empower our teachers, one that lead change, one that share stories. Thank you.